He's a pioneer and the voice for XTV East Coast. He's an XTV Hall of Famer. And now, Justin Turkey Lips brings his famous voice to the podcast world. This is Justin's Podcast. We rolling, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another exciting edition of Justin's Podcast. That's right, you boy out here. Another week giving you some kick-ass audio, as they say. And, uh, you know, before we get into anything, I just want to go ahead and uh, give a, first of all, tell you guys, thank you. Thank you very much for listening. I appreciate you so much for tuning in uh, to these podcasts. You know, you got so much to do on your busy schedule and you take time out to check me out and, and, and it's very much appreciated. I also like to thank my sponsors out there who uh, keep the funds going keep the bills paid and uh, I got to start off by thanking Vaseline intensive care ladies and gentlemen Vaseline has a radiant cocoa brand with pure cocoa butter and it's uh, got a vitalizing body gel oil for healthy glowing skin with even restoring moisturizers you know uh, it's a non-greasy body oil uh, that could be applied to your body uh, before or after taking a shower and it replenishes your skin by locking in moisture for a very natural glow it also absorbs fast for a non-greasy feel that's the healing power of Vaseline yeah you know I got some uh, real rough hands and I tell you one thing, you know, after doing all that working, I always got to keep me a good pair of Vaseline next to me. But not only that, but I also use Icy Hot because uh, I got this hip problem with my back, my lower back. And, you know, every time I'm doing a little bit too much uh, heavy lifting or carrying on, you know, I ain't as, ain't as, uh, as, 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 as spry as I used to be back in the day. So that's why I use icy hot medicated spray that's right this ain't the old grease kind this type is a non-messy formula you can spray it out the can it's got a nice low film of spray you spray it on the uh infect the affected area and you know while uh, you do it after you take a shower or something like that you lay down when you ain't got nothing to do and man this sure does soothe that pain and it helps you get a, a great great night rest i have had many a nights well, I've been so tired from a long day, you know, many, many hours up and about, running around. You know how XTV is, and I'm always happy to have me some Icy Hot medicated spray on hand. This here has fast, long-lasting relief, a no-mess continuous spray, works at any angle, and dries quickly. This is the maximum strength pain relief, stri uh, pain relief spray, Icy Hot medicated spray and you guys got to have some anytime you guys are feeling the pain all right i'm very excited today about uh the show that we have on man so so many guests uh on the horizon for this here justin podcast and you know you know people the more and more people are hearing about it the more and more this this whole uh this whole brand new era uh continues to grow you know and i mean a new era as in uh I, you know, I, I haven't come up with a name just for it yet, but all these different things are coming out. I particularly enjoyed uh, the Big Trunks D-Matic story, not just because he's my good friend, but uh, it, it just had I had a hell of a lot of uh, information that uh, that I'm not familiar with. And, you know, that's what we appreciate, you know, in, in this day and age. It's, it's funny, after uh, about 30 years or, you know, 30 years or so doing XTV, there's still so much to be uncovered, and uh, I find that to be very entertaining, as well as funny. You know, a few things I listened to this week. I listened to the story of Big Trunks D. Manic. Uh, we had uh, recently listened to the Pain Shoot interview, which was very entertaining. Uh, uh, you know, j j just a lot of crazy stuff. I mean, he was talking about Vic Vicious, you know, and, and during that time period, and you know, the, you know, he just really went in depth on a whole lot of things. Pardon me, I'm smoking. It's 5.40 p.m. on a Sunday here, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I'm just enjoying my time off. 
thinking about, you know, uh, thinking about my week. And, you know, uh, shout out to the West Coast, to, to the West Side. You go to XTV West Side and uh, you can check out a whole lot of the things that they got going on. I'm very sure that uh, it's going to be so much more to come in the near future. And I got to thank you guys, everybody on the West Coast. Uh, for keeping us, giving us something to listen to on the road. I mean, you know, uh, I don't get a chance to, you know, call and make calls and do podcasts every single day, but I will attempt, however, to bring them to you every week. That's why I keep on uh, having these interviews and, and, you know, just piling them up and piling them up. And uh, they they out here, so it will be no shortage of interviews. You know, eventually I want to get to twice a week, but, you know, uh, for now, you know, just one podcast a week, you know, that's that's the best I can do. But, you know, when I'm not doing that on the road, it's always great to listen to uh, some stuff from the West Coast. I definitely enjoy listening to Jazz, Jazz Ma's podcast. There's something very different for XTV, you know, Jazz's perspective. He and uh, Mac Anthony over there, who sound just like Jazz, but, you know, it's a bit of difference. I can tell the difference. Ladies and gentlemen, I can also, uh, you know, you know, th- this is a forum where you can talk about whatever you want to. And I'm going to talk about what I want to. You know, they, they say, oh, Justin, you ain't supposed to talk about this. You ain't supposed to say that. Guess what? I'm saying it. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Reefer and Liquor 2 is coming out. And I particularly am going to be having uh, many, many guests over the uh, next, over the course of the next few weeks <clears throat> who are going to be participating in that movie uh it's gonna be a whole brand new cast so no repeats and that goes for you too bob bob finds himself in two scenes everybody else get one how the hell is he in two scenes but that's neither here nor there so i'm very excited about that uh you know one thing i won't reveal is the cast members but uh it, it, it's it's oh my god I'm i'm looking so much forward to this it's gonna be so bananas. Very exciting show I have for you today. Two very special guests, uh, and you know this is a this is a spur of the moment thing. It's crazy how many people are showing up for XTV Mania, ladies and gentlemen. XTV Mania is gonna be jam packed to the max. This is gonna be the greatest XTV Mania of all time. Shut up, Lil LT. Shut up, Killer. Shut up, Lil Killer. All y'all shut the hell up. Because I never go, oh, you know what it be? Shut up. Ain't shit funny. This is going to be the greatest of all time. It is positioned to be the greatest of all time. And that is why, you know, we're seeing all these people on. Oh, I, I was even I was even thinking about having a Bob old la- lying ass on this podcast. But I don't think that we'll be able to get no truth out of him. So, you know, I'm, I'm, still, on the, I'm still on the wall about that. I'm not so sure. But anyways, as I was saying, great couple guests that we have here, a uh, couple people who, you know, uh, haven't haven't been heard from in a in a long, long time. And uh, one in particular, you know, the story was always asked, why, why did she leave in the first place? You know, and uh, I think we're going to find that out here. Uh, both got they start back in the day. So that always make for some interesting conversation, you know, during the er- the, the Ellicott era. Uh, that's pretty cool. I, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the helicopter area. I, I'm right. I'm right. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, none other than Coco and Tawana will be uh, joining me later on today. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to talking to them. Two very beautiful young ladies. Uh, they they evolved into, you know, just just gorgeous women. And. Uh, well, that's all you can say about them is that they're gorgeous because all you care about is looks. Who in the hell invited you in here, Terry? I ain't even know you had came in here. That's right. You don't know anything about a damn thing. I looked out for Coco all those years. Where were you? Well, I was right there uh, doing my job, okay? At, at, at the best of my ability. Thank you very much. You're welcome, you fat egg-sucking dog. Anyways... Y'all don't mind Daniel Dingo. He comes by from time to time. <coughs> I don't know what his deal is. We got to take a break, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But when, when I come back, we will be on the line. Well, actually, they're going to be coming in here. They waiting outside. Coco and Tawana. 
Stay with me. Are you a heavy weed smoker? Are your fingertips yellow and burned? Well, I used to have those same problems until I found Hydro Drops. Hydro Drops keep me motivated and fresh. They keep my eyes from getting bloodshot red. And when I rub it on my hands and all over my uh, whatever I rub it on, it gets rid of the smell. It's perfect. You can put it in your eyes and you can rub it on your hands. I don't know how they came up with this technology, but it's great. It's called Hydro Drops by New Millennium Drugs. Even my girlfriend, Martha, tried it. Hi, I'm Martha. I never used to try to used to, uh, come on, Martha. Well, I never used to smoke, but it was because, well, I was embarrassed by all the fumes of marijuana out in public, and I didn't want my eyes to look red. But my wonderful husband bought me Hydro Drops by New Millennium Drugs. And, well, it's just wonderful. Now I smoke all the time and no one can tell. I even went to church high. Whoa, Martha, that's enough. All she's really trying to say is that Hydro Drops leaves you very convincingly sober looking. And that is a great thing for smokers like myself. Hydro Drops, the best thing ever to come. Hey guys, don't forget to, you know, go ahead, like, subscribe, uh, you know, leave a, a message in the comments, you know, uh, I, I appreciate everything, what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show, you know, I, I really don't uh, mind any of it at all, you know, I appreciate everything that you guys, all, all the feedback that I get from you, uh, you know, if you don't like my, my little skits, you know, uh, if you don't like uh, my, my impersonations, hey, it's fine. You're not hurting my feelings, all right? You know, I even got a, uh, I, I had an issue. I had to deal with uh, Urban Beats because they gave me the wrong promo code. Yeah, yeah, I got a complaint that uh, that my promo code wasn't working on Urban Beats. Hey, I'm trying to promote y'all. The least y'all can do is have me fixed up with my people so I can be looking good in front of the nation. That's right. Speaking of the nation, I had a, I was, I was nice enough to go ahead and give them a form to get their stuff off. You know what I'm saying? Get something off their chest. What they do? They come in here and trash my building. That's right. Me and Martha was in here about, about a whole week cleaning up what they messed up. Just destroyed the place. I will never have the NWN on this show again. But who I will have on here are two very lovely ladies. The two who I talked to you guys about at the top of the show. And uh, they are in here with me right now. My in-studio guest is not very often that I get to do this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Coco and Tawana Sanchez. Did I say that right? No, it's Tana. It's Tana. Oh, Tana. Yeah, Tana Sanchez. Well, how you doing, Justin? Hey, Justin. How y'all doing, ladies? It's it's good to see you guys. It's a good time right here on my pat podcast. Y'all got the room just smelling good. Just get get yourself a hand. You smell just lovely. <laughs> you crazy, Justin? You know we always been close, and you know I, I just want to say that uh, I, I just I just miss being here. You know I mean seeing the atmosphere and everything. You know it's real cool being back for a while. You, you need you need to stick around, Coco. I mean, you know, uh, XTV is your home, and you know, you guys both came during the days of uh, of the sides days when you know everybody was still a cartoon, and you know, uh, AVW, for, as far as the East Coast decided, you know, we want to make things uh, not just be about wrestling, and you know, we want to take characters who uh, you know don't necessarily get chosen. And you know, give them give them a spotlight. And so uh, when it came around t- towards uh, the second season of the Buddha Monkey Show, Tana, uh, you you were part of that original cast. Yeah, I was around when we first decided to come to PlayStation, and you know, um, Abu was gonna do the game and everything. 
And so, you know, being a part of that was real special. You know, uh, I was the type of girl that fit the criteria that they wanted and everything, you know. Um, you know, I guess uh, I took the who, whoever the network or whoever by storm because, you know, as far as a child game, you know, they weren't expecting somebody to, you know, look like me. I mean, you know, here I came with the short shorts, you know, I got the big boobs, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, you, you you were definitely striking, and I remember uh, the artwork. That was uh, the second game that we had got. I think it was nineteen ninety seven, and uh, the second game that we got was Crash Bandicoot. Of course, the first was Power Move Pro Wrestling, and man, we should just stare at your picture on the back of that case. Yeah, so you know that kind of got me in trouble, you know. Uh... In the early going, but I mean, before all that, though, I mean, I started out, they wanted to call me Carmen, you know, they thought that my name was too ghetto. Who, who, who's running this? Well, it, it wasn't Naughty Dog, because, you know, we were, you know, developed by Naughty Dog, and, you know, we came in under them and everything, but it just turned out that uh, Universal had an issue with us and everything, you know, or had an issue with me and, you know, how I was presented, you know, to kids, and they just thought that I was, like, a bad example, and... It was just, it was just a big mess. I see. So, uh, they, they, uh, I, I, I was, you know, I was, I was looking up some stuff early on on the internet, you know, I tried to do a little bit of research on people before I have them in here, and they say that you was deemed, uh, too inappropriate, and they was even calling you too slutty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just how it was, uh, it was just real unfair, you know what I mean, because originally, you know, the guy who came up with the idea for us, to do Crash Bandicoot, uh, kind of got his idea from like the Roger Rabbit character, you know, and you know, Abu was kind of kind of goofy, you know, uh, unlikely type of hero who's gonna get the girl in the end, and I was his love interest, and you know, why are you laughing, Justin? Cause you talk like China. I'm sorry. Rest in peace to Joni Laura. We love you, China. Oh, it's so sad that she that she died, but it's it's me you're calling me that. Y'all so wrong, just you still crazy. <laughs> oh, side no Joe, I feel embarrassed, even though we by ourselves. He feel embarrassed by talking like a girl. That's a good thing for editing. Yeah, it is, because, man, you got to call. But anyways, <laughs> I'm sorry. Continue with uh, your story. So anyways, like I was saying, though, you're stupid, Justin. Um... <laughs> Bobby, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tana. It's okay. It's perfectly fine. But anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the creator, you know, he just had a, a Pamela Anderson type of idea, you know, for me to be on the show. And, um, you know, he, he just wanted that type of a figure, you know, when he was going through uh, the choice of girls that, uh, that fit the criteria, you know, for what he wanted. And so... You know, his idea was, you know, the Jessica Rabbit kind of idea where, you know, I was just going to be this super hot chick that was uh, interested in Romy or, you know, Abu at the time who, you know, uh, has, you know, it's just like so unlikely for me to be in love with him, but I am. So that was pretty much the premise for that. And uh, I guess Sony just didn't like the idea or they just didn't like how I was dressed. I was too provocative for them. And they never bring, they never brought me back after the second season. That was just, you know, I came in, you know, uh, I didn't, I wasn't even used on the show that much uh, because they didn't let uh, Abu go to the bonus levels, you know, like the hidden levels. And you know, I, I had a, I had a part in the story, but they didn't, they never alluded to that part of the story, you know, for some reason or another. Well, it's probably mostly because, you know, Romy ain't know what the hell he was doing. I mean, it's our first time. We got a PlayStation and shit. And, you know, uh, I, I mean, shit, we, we don't know what the hell to do. We just kind of freestyling and everything, you know. I mean, going back and, you know, looking at uh, the gameplay nowadays, you know, it's a whole bunch of uh, different secret levels. And, you know, some people can shoot through these games and not even, even die, you know. But we used to be getting our ass kicked. I mean, I remember being stuck on certain levels forever and ever and ever and you know thank god for the memory card because you know 
prior to that, we used to have to just start all the way over from the top. You get all the way to a certain point, and you got to start all the way over from the beginning, you know, if, if you die. And, and, of course, the the levels naturally got harder and harder as you progressed. So, you know, it was very difficult. Yeah, but I was only used as a as a bonus chick, you know, like a, as a side girl. You know, even though I was supposed to be his main love interest, you know, that was the idea. And uh, they just... They just didn't go with me at the time. Uh, not only that, but you know, after you after you left, and after the shock of uh, you not coming back for season three of a booze show, which was uh, Wrath of Cortex, I think it is. That's when uh, Coco first made her appearance. Yeah. But. You know, when, when when people saw that, you know, you wasn't a part of that, I mean, you know, I remember because it was Christmas Day that we had started the whole thing. And, uh, you know, there I am, you know, with Romy. And, you know, we're doing this thing and we're looking around and we just wondering, you know, I, I think it was Romy who said, you know, where, where's Tawana? You know, because that's what we call you. You know, we didn't even know your name was Tana. But... <clears throat> Yeah, we like, where's Tawana at, you know? And uh, it was just this big mystery, uh, this big untold story. But not until now, people uh, have started to speculate uh, due to, you know, the nosy-ass future. Oh, my God, is they? Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> I'm sorry you did it again, but uh, it's just that, you know what I mean? Now, now with all this different information, people coming forward about things, you know, uh, these rumors uh, st- have started to surround you. And, you know, I just wanted to ask you about it. I mean, now there's one rumor that uh, that you got swallowed by Tiny and, and, and you lived in his stomach for a while. Uh, uh, that's obviously not true, though, because you're here. I never lived in nobody's tummy. That's absurd. But, you know, there, there's another rumor uh, saying that that you had left Romy Rome for uh, Pinstripe Potoro, who was uh, a uh, villain on that show. Now, is that true? It was. It was. Um, and that's just, that's the reason why, you know, I kind of had a whole lot of heat. And, you know, respect to Romy because, you know, he always, um, he always showed me love, you know, even though we we broke up he never stopped caring about me he never stopped writing to me and talking to me and he always felt like you know just because we're not you know lovers anymore doesn't mean that we can't be friends and so it's kind of like we always have you know have always had a special place in each other's heart for each other um but yeah at the time i did i left romy for pinstripe uh and i i regretted that for my whole life because it was one of the worst relationship if not the worst relationship that i've ever been in um pinstripe was very he was very rich but he was also very controlling and very abusive and very demanding and it was just like you know real life ike and tina turner it was just like he was very violent and very rude to me and he talked to me very nasty and is complete opposite of Romy, and Romy didn't like him in real in real life. Like they really had real problems, and um, that that's just. Not, I, I mean, I don't mean to cut you off or nothing, but you know, uh, my brother don't get a whole lot of credit for just being the type of uh, person who you know can hold a whole lot of stuff in and not let everybody know about his business. Because let me tell y'all something, he goes through a lot, and DT too, and everybody you know is always bashing them. But they go through so much, and they don't even, you know, make a big deal about that, you know, or or put it on blast or put it on Front Street. So, you know, you know, he, he all, was, all I'm saying is he just doesn't get enough credit. It is true, you know. I mean, we always seeing, you know, the upside of Romy and, uh, you know, uh, and, and DT, and they always laughing and joking. But it is true, though. You know, it's a whole lot of stuff that that did go on uh that never surfaced we're gonna talk about that in just a few moments we're gonna talk about uh not only that but we're gonna talk about how coco first got her uh start here in xtv we're gonna talk about more of tawana's beef with uh romy's new love interest 
And we also going to talk about uh, Coco's huge fan following outside of XTV. Uh, what I mean, I'm just not learning about it, and I'm sure uh, many people on the West Coast don't know anything about it. But first, I'm going to talk about Maka. Guys, have you ever wondered how I stay so sharp on these airwaves, talking to everybody, not doing too much stuttering, not as bad. I mean, I do, I do some stuttering. All right, I've been stuttering a little bit today, but... That's because I ain't take my certified organic maca by now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a pure powder with a six to one concentrate. This is the purest thing right here. And it's grown all the way at the top of, uh, what's that mine called? At the top, yeah, the Andes. That's what I was gonna say. I just had to read to make sure. I knew that though, I knew that. Yeah, it was grown all the way at the top at a, at a Andes Mountain. So, you know, this is a very, very rare place to get such a uh, such a formula, and it's not a formula. It's actually a supplement, and uh, it's actually su uh, used to support uh, fertility, sexual, healthy activity, and raw gelatinized. Now I said that all wrong, but you know what I'm trying to tell you. I should have took some maca today because I'm stupid right now. But you don't have to be. All you guys got to do is go to your local health store. And most of them uh, sell it in the botanical and herbs uh, section. And you pick up you some Peruvian maca by now. And it's interesting, Coco, because, you know, I mean, with all the controversy surrounding uh, Tana and, you know, her having her being forced to resign from the whole crash series, that's what invited you to become uh, the newest uh the newest female representative of the Crash team on Crash Bandicoot 2. <laughs> exactly, you know, that's how I first started. That's how I first uh, started my imprint in the game. And it was kind of crazy because, you know, back then, you know, they didn't want to let me play or nothing like that. They didn't, didn't want to let me get in the game, I guess because I was too young. But they just let me be, the, you know, the brainiac sidekick little sister and everything, you know. I, I didn't have nothing going on, kind of like what uh what what Diddy and Dixie had. You know, we wanted to have that, but we just didn't because you know I wasn't a playable character. You know, we couldn't trade back and forth. It was all about a boo, which I understood. You know, it was cool, but I you know I definitely wanted to get my chance. Um, and you know, even at first, now that I remember, uh, you know, Romy he didn't even want me to be in there. He, he didn't want me to be a part of, um, uh, of the show or nothing like that. He, he just wanted me to, you know, be his little sister and, you know, stay in the background. Because he, he was mad because Tana was gone. Yeah, you know, we used to still talk. We, we talked and everything. And um, he would tell me about that. He would just talk about, you know, how it wasn't easy for him, you know, to team up with his sister. And, you know, for her to be a part of it because he felt like it was just more responsibility and everything. And I would tell him, like, babe, you know, this is where you are now. You know, this is how it is. You know, um, you know, you just, you just got to pull through this. And, you know, eventually they did, you know, and, uh, and, and they started to click. Yeah, I mean, um, by, by the time, you know, I mean, he, he went on and he wrapped up part two. And then by the time part three came, you know, they finally went on and gave me a chance. You know, um, I learned, you know, Kung Fu. I taught myself Kung Fu over the summer. And, you know, that's how I was able to, you know, kind of show them that I was ready, you know, for the adventure at hand. I mean, you know, Romy was way more seasoned, way more experienced than what I was. But, you know, I was ready to prove that, um, you know, I could just really go out there and kick some ass. <laughs> I'm serious. I could. I could go out there and kick some ass. And, uh, and, and they saw that. And, um. You know, that's why I picked up this kind of accent from, I mean, when I first came in, they didn't like how I talked. They, they, they thought I talked too much like Sally. So they told me I, I need to talk like Jeff Jarrett. So now when I'm in XTV, I talk like Jeff Jarrett. And they told me, uh, they told me to use the catchphrase, don't piss me off. So I tell their ass, don't piss me off. <clears throat> oh, man, Coco. Well, a very, very outspoken individual. A very, uh, very important part of the uh, Crash series, and I remember on part three, uh, you and I, I think we did a, a couple things, uh, where you rode on my back, you know, that was a whole lot of fun. Right, right. 
Yeah, you know, we had we had fun doing that and um yo I just remember your levels always been the more fun levels. You ain't have songs like a boo, but you know, they, they wanted to they wanted to give give you songs and you know, give you an identity, but you know, that never did catch on. But you know, uh your your levels, you know, your your scenes were so exciting and uh just 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 so uh fun filled. You remember that? I definitely remember that. Me and Sparky, you know, we used to, we used to really, um, you know, uh, we was real close. I mean, we was all real close on that set. It was just a, a, a real big family, you know. Uh, and, you know, Roman made it like that. You know, he just made everybody love everybody. You know, me, you, and Sparky, and uh, Dingo Down, and Romy, and, you know, it, 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 was, it was cool. It was real cool. <clears throat> well, one thing that I was very surprised to find out about, though, Coco, uh is that you know i mean you didn't you didn't you know necessarily have the greatest stint over here in xtv you did your thing you know you came in here and there but uh i was very surprised in doing my research that you had uh such a international success yeah i did have an inter international success i, I did uh you know i, I was a performance artist called C's. <clears throat> And you know, I mean, well, what what would you attribute that success to then? Um, you know, well, I, I think that you know, since uh, you know, I debuted it. Hold on, can I hit that? Oh yeah, definitely. Hold on. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We smoke in here. We drink. We do whatever we want to. It's the Justin's podcast, and it's a good time. So let's hey. Yeah, but um, I was saying um, well. I just attribute that to, um, you know, just me being so young and, you know, me being able to, you know, if, uh, venture out outside of XTV. I, you know, I'm just that kind of person. I just don't like to stay in one place. And I'm just a traveling girl, you know. So, um, you know, I like to get around. And, you know, uh, Romy know that. You know, he like to travel too. But, you know, XTV is his home. But, you know, for me, I just wanted to spread my spread my wings. And I just didn't want to, I didn't want this to, to define me. I wanted, you know, to be international and have uh, a sort of a worldwide success and fan base. And, um, and spawn off into doing other things that I like, you know, like, um, like dancing and aerobics and stuff like that, you know. It's just like over here, it just always seemed like it was about wrestling, and wrestling is cool, you know. I like I like hitting people over here with guitars and stuff like that. But um, you know, you know, I have a passion for music, and I got a passion for dancing, and uh, yeah, I just I just went out and, and did other things, you know, just uh, ex explored, you know, uh, my life, and it just did what what girls like to do, you know, have fun. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it definitely ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, uh, you guys got to go out uh, and if you go on the Internet, if you go on YouTube, you got to type in Coco Bandicoot uh, Galaxies. I guess that's like a Spanish word for galaxies, but type that in G-A-L-A-X-I-A-S and then type in uh, MMD Bad Apple featuring Coco. Uh, it's another video with Coco. Hangman, Hangman style. Yeah, Hangman style, uh, featuring Sky does Minecraft, and uh, it's just just a whole bunch of interesting stuff. Coco, like you've never seen her before, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, and uh, what's interesting about that is that you know I mean, throughout the whole Crash series, you know we we, we started we saw you uh, starting off as kind of like a little girl, you know. Yeah, I was about nine years old. I, I was a, I was a little little girl when I when I first started in XTV, and you know I just didn't get paid attention too much. You know, people didn't really care about you know what I had to say. You know, uh, everything was pretty much already established by the, by the time I came around. You know, I mean the people who were at the top were going to be at the top, and XTV, you know. You know, size or whatever you want to call it. Everybody was just stuck in their way, and and that's just a part of the reason. You know, why I realized, you know, I don't really have a place here. I mean, I'm always just going to be looked at as a boo's little sister. You know, I'm not going to get no no notoriety. You know, because it, it, everything was just too big for me. I'm just some nine year old that just got placed. Uh, you know, replaced uh, uh, Tana here, and that's just all I, I kind of was to them. So. Naturally, I just, you know, decided to spread my wings and fly. And, uh, 
it was fun being over there and uh, you know just getting to meet all those different people uh, and you know just experiencing that was just so fun for me you know it was you know kind of like how Crash was you know on part three and when I got to do that but I got to do more of it and that's what was real fun about that I, I, I really I really loved it yeah, it sounded like a great experience. You definitely look like you're having fun in those videos. I thought I even saw you doing a little bit of twerking. I, I can't believe that, Coco. Well, I'm of age. I'm of age. Yeah, well, you know, uh, you say no, nobody uh, paid attention to you. I mean, you felt like you felt like pretty much a loner then, uh, walking around the, the hallways. I did feel like a loner, you know. I mean, I, I didn't have any friends. All I really had was Sparky. And, you know, he was my baby, you know, and he, uh, he kept me company all the time. He was always up under me, you know, he was my sidekick. Uh, you were always yelling at me all the time, you know, screaming at me about something that I'm not doing something right, you know, but I love you, you know, uh, we, we, we always had a great relationship. Yep. And, um... You know, it was just tough, you know. I, I went through a whole lot of stuff, uh, you know, just, you know, behind the scenes, you know, uh, backstage. And, you know, people talk about it on the Internet now because there was people who were there that actually know about what happened. But, you know, I mean, there were Cortex guys offering me money for sex, you know. And I'm only, you know, 14, 15 years old, you know. And there's these old, you know, prudes following me around the set and, you know, just doing all kinds of uh suggestive you know stuff towards me and i'm like you know where's the security uh you know what i mean where's the protection you know it was just kind of uh things were just kind of thrown together you know it wasn't really any organization and um yeah i was i was scared a whole lot but you know i mean i i spent plenty of times having to fight you know uh fight people fight people away or, you know i mean it, it was just crazy well, I mean, what was Romy? I mean, did you ever bring that to his attention? I rarely got to talk to Romy, except for when we were on set. We never were, were, were able to connect because he was always being pulled here or there, you know? It was so new for him, too. I mean, uh, he was just coming into, you know, uh, fame and superstardom. He was everywhere. Everybody wanted a piece of him. And that's just how it was. So, like I said, I was a loner. And, you know, I, I, I had to fight. I did a whole lot of fighting. <clears throat> well, you know, speaking of fights, Tana, you uh, have issues. And, you know, the Crash series continued long after uh, Romy got out of it. But <clears throat> there's a lady by the name of Pasadena who was rumored to even be a, a newcomer here in XTV. And... No, that's just what I heard, and and it's saying you don't even you don't even have to say anything. Cause let me tell you something about Pasadena. This bitch opened her mouth. Woo hoo! Can't fight real. <laughs> you crazy? This bitch wants to come over here and try to say that I'm trying to take her man. Bitch, I don't have to try to take your man. I have my own issues, and me and Romy have already decided between each other that we're gonna remain friends okay and he doesn't want you obviously or else you guys would be together but you're still ling lingering around on the side doing whatever it is that you do while he's continuing to live his life so you could just back the fuck off <laughs> that's what i like i like it like that i like it when it's hot let me tell you something this girl pasadena uh not only do y'all got beef, but I understand that you guys got in a fight. You guys can type in Pasadena versus Tana. Uh, check out check out the images of that fight. <clears throat> oh, I got I got one better for you because you know y'all talking about Tana and, and um and Pasadena, but y'all don't know about Romeo and Tails. Well, we was gonna we was gonna get into that because people before that like people don't even know that uh. That you had a relationship with 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 Tails. Well, that's because that ain't true. Me and Tails were just real good friends. We were real, real good friends, and uh, we were, we were real close. You know, he's one of the guys who I, 
you know, kind of became friends with because, you know, he pulled me to the side and, you know, he just told me about how I was over here, about being, you know, the, the kind of type of person who kind of plays second, you know, plays the back row. And um, he showed me how to get around here, but, you know, uh, yeah, that's a that's a huge, huge, big misconception that me and Tails ever dated, you know, just because his pictures out there. But we were, we were just real good friends. We're buddies. He's still my buddy. Well, can I ask you, I mean, since y'all are that close, I mean, is Tails gay? No, he ain't gay. He just flamboyant. I think he gay. You know, that's that's just... I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with that. He ain't gay. Y'all say what y'all want to say about Tyree, but he is a good boy. He got a good heart. See, that's what you say about gay boys. He a good boy. Yeah. He good, all right. You are so wrong. He is wrong. You is so wrong for that. Don't be like that, Justin. So, I mean, you were going to tell us about uh, something between Romy and Tails? Oh, yeah. I mean, why y'all talking about stuff on the internet? It's fights between them all over because, I, well, well, I mean, they used to just get into it and it was mostly Romy. Romy would, you know, get in Tails' face every time, you know, we would be kind of, you know, cutting up together or doing whatever, holding hands. And, you know, he had a problem with that, you know, because he was just so overprotective of me when, of me when he was around, you know, uh, you know, later on. And, you know, I, you know, I started to get older and things like that, you know, start to develop and feel him now. And he just, you know, was, you know, became extra protective. He started to, to notice me, you know. But, like, when I was just a little, little girl, he didn't care. But now that I'm getting older and, you know, you know, uh, he's starting to see guys pay more attention to me, you know, he was extra protective when I was at Brown Tails. And it's like, well, I'm like, well, where were you when all these men were out here stalking me? And, you know, it's been plenty of times where I still get phone calls and, you know, just, I don't know, people trying to mess with Romy and then they, they're coming after me. That's crazy as hell. It was it was it was seriously between Tails and Roman. That's another thing that guys don't know about. You kinda talk like Yucky. Justin, if you tell me one more thing, I'm gonna bash you over the head with a guitar. <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> but it was so tough just being in the middle of them because here I am like I have to stand in between Romy and I have to stand in between Tyree and you know, it's just like, I can't pick a side. They're screaming at each other. They're trying to kill each other. So, you know, eventually what happened is, uh, behind my back, of course, they, they made a doggone deal amongst each other that if Romy, uh, they, they're going to fight each other, you know, with, with nobody around, no cameras around, or at least they thought there wasn't. And they're going to fight each other. And, um, well... If Romy wins, then Tails gotta leave me alone. And if Tails wins, then you know Romy's gotta stay out of out of our business. And you know they had a damn oh they came back so damn bloody. They had damn knocked each other out. And it's a good thing that they were damn cartoons at the time because if they were any lesser man, he would they both would have been damn killed. They wouldn't be here today. So you know I, I'm just. You know, thankful that things played out the way they did, but it, there's still animosity towards them too. And you know, they was even in the main event at uh at at, at the first of the XTV Mania. It was Romy, Tails, Dee Dee, and and Alvin. <clears throat> I'm I'm just surprised that none of this ever surfaced uh, to the XTV side. That's just how Romy is. He just keeps stuff bottled in. He just. He just doesn't talk about stuff. He, he makes a lot of everything. He makes, because he wants people ever, He wants people around him to feel comfortable. That's why he likes people to laugh and everything. And if things ain't going right, he, he doesn't like to talk about it. And if something's certain Romy, you can tell you can, because of the look on his face. <clears throat> he is like that. That is, that is crazy. So, I mean, when did, what ended up happening in that brawl then? I called the police. I call the police because I come out there and I see them fighting. And they're both damn near incapacitated. And I call 911. I was scared for my life. And I just see these two out in the middle. Of, uh, I can't find either one of them. And I find them in the middle of the alley, bloody and a mess. It was, it was horrific. That's crazy. 
Well, you know, uh, you know, wrapping things up here. <clears throat> you know, both of you ladies are very, very beautiful, and uh, Coco, you've grown to be a, a very gorgeous woman. Uh, Tana, you know, for as long as I've known you, you know, you've been sexy as hell, and you guys have have been known to take some uh, raunchy pictures. Uh, could you tell me about these kind of rated X pictures that y'all got floating around on the internet? Now, th those, a lot of those pictures uh, I could say about Coco is that, you know, she is not that kind of lady a at all, at all. I am a mean girl. I will kick some ass before I take off my doggone clothes or something like that. I ain't that type of girl. I will beat a bitch over the head with a guitar in a heartbeat. I can't say that I've taken some pictures that were pretty and, uh, you know, and some maybe revealing outfits, but as far as nudity, uh-uh, I ain't that type of seriously, bitch. I will slap, <laughs> I will slap fire from anybody who tries to approach me for some stuff because I ain't taking pictures of no damn nudity. Well, I, I, on the other hand, you know, do have some quite raunchy pictures, you know, some, some nudity, you know, um, like I said, Pinstripe was very demanding. And um, he had me doing all kinds of things that, you know, you know, I, I wasn't really necessarily ready to do, but I did it anyways. Well, I mean, you know, Tony, you, you know, I, I always hoped that you would develop here in XTV because you got that kind of look that, you know, I mean, could have some type of appeal. Do you ever see yourself performing in the ring? <clears throat> I don't think so. I don't think that being in the ring is my place. I see myself more as a valet or something like that. Um, I'm just here to support, you know, Romy and, you know, just his whole movement, you know, everything that he's doing. You know, I I'm here with Coco. You know, we're having a good time. It's crazy because, you know, I mean, you, you Coco, you took Tana's place. Uh, was there ever any animosity about that, Tana? Oh no, absolutely not. How, how am I going to have animosity towards a nine-year-old? And at the time, you know, I'm um, I'm probably in my early 20s, you know, so there's like, there's definitely never any animosity. It wasn't Coco's fault. She was chosen to, to fill that spot, you know, um, and it was a perfect choice because, you know, her and uh, Abu had great chemistry, you know, uh, they did something different from what Dee Dee and Dixie were doing, and you know, although, you know, Coco didn't, you know, reach those, you know, uh, necessarily new heights in XTV, she had a great career and she's had a great career, uh, you know, just doing her own thing. And, you know, with that background, it, sh it shows and proves that she can have a career um, over here in XTV uh, and with, with that backing, you know, and she can definitely be as formidable as any of the other girls that are here right now. <clears throat> That's a good point, you know, uh, you know, uh, and just doing all the, all of this research, I mean, it, it's just, it's crazy what you find out. You know, I'm seeing pictures, uh, seeing pictures of Romy and, and, and you, Coco, with, with Tails and Spyro in the picture, all on the beach. Yeah, um, because that's just how it was. I mean, you know, um, NXTV, one thing people don't realize is that back then, you know, there used to be like a, uh, it was just a, it was like what what you saw when XTV was going on, but there was also like a backstage kind of side thing going on. And, you know, it was, that's what it was all about back then. Um, you know, it, it was just. Everything was left to the imagination, but you know we all had we all hung around with each other. You know, we you know I hung with Yaki and Tails, and you know we all got a we got along well. Yep. You know we uh hung out with Spyro. Uh, Romy was jealous of Spyro when he first came in because um you know Mental Mantana was showing him so much love. That's right, because you know people don't know that you know even though I was not a part of the actual filming, you know, I was still hanging around, you know, yeah, just backstage, yeah, backstage, you know, uh, just doing my own thing, you know, still, you know, just hanging out with the cash, being around, you know, kind of bottom of the toy box, as they say, so to speak. Yeah, well, it's just too bad that, you know, you ain't, 
you ain't thrive the way you should. And even when you uh, go on the internet and type in Tana, you know, it's very, very little um, information about you. You know, all they got is the, the, the scantily clad uh, look, you know, you know, and you wear like very little bit of clothes and then they got you, uh, you know, these different rumors about you <clears throat> and it's just a bunch of scandalous stuff, you know, but you, you go and you look, you look up Coco and, you know, you find a plethora of stuff. Coco with a huge fan following. People just absolutely love you, Coco, all around the world. Like I said, it's just that time. Uh, by the time I came in XTV, you know, in 2001, you know, it's like I mentioned, you know, everything was already established. So by the time, you know, I come in, the, the crowd, you know, I, I guess, you know, it was just like those young kids. And once they got a, a look at me and, you know, kind of saw what I was doing, uh, they kind of gravitated towards me. I guess it's because I was different. I was... I was just pretty regular, you know, and, uh, you know, there was nothing like that in XTV. Everybody was kind of just larger than life, over the top, but here I am, just this regular, you know, little girl, and, you know, uh, I grew, you know, with them, and, you know, they grew with me, and, you know, they're my fan base, so I love them all, and I, I'm going to continue to do this. <clears throat> That's a beautiful thing. I'm glad uh, to have both of you guys, both of you ladies on this show. Uh, hope you guys continue with great success. And, you know, it, it was great talking to, to the both of you. Great catching up with you, Coco and Tana. Uh, it's great catching up with you. Very great catching up with you too, Justin. All right, we're about to get up out of here, ladies and gentlemen, on this beautiful Sunday evening as the sun is still up and it's a pretty day and it's flossing season. You see what I did there? I'm on this Justin Tangerley. Until next time, we'll see you.